For the past year, each season of anime has had a seasonal series that leaves a really strong impression both positive or negative. Sony Boy, Wonder Egg Priority, Mushiko Tensei, The 86, Osama Ranking, and Dress Up Darling have all been contestants to be some of the best seasonal anime recently. The question of what's the next banger series is always on the anime community's mind. Outside of the usual shonen lineup, people do keep on the lookout for something that will catch them off guard and surpass their expectations. When looking at the previous season of anime, there are plenty of good series causing some commotion. Alongside the debut of Spy X Family, we also had Love is War knocking it out of the park with another amazing season as well as Tamodachi Game giving us the weekly mind game angst. Within this same season, we also had the debut of Summertime Rendering. Looking at the synopsis, my first impressions were that of a supernatural murder mystery on a remote island. I didn't know how good it'd be, but I didn't get the feeling my expectations would be blown away. As we are now in the summer season and the series being halfway through, I do have to say I have never been more glad to be wrong. Fiction always tends to pull different tropes and cliches from each other and keeps them alive via execution in various stories. It's pretty much how the entire shonen demographic works minus a few game changers every blue moon. Summertime rendering pulls the return by death mechanic most commonly known from ReZero. It's not as complex and interesting as ReZero's but for the sake of the story it doesn't necessarily need to be. Each time our MC Shinpei comes back he does aim to fix his mistakes that led him to be killed just like Subaru does when dealing with any of the witches cult or practically any deadly encounter. However the key difference between the two series is that the tension is more personally aggressive whereas Subaru situations can have a lot more complex decisions being involved which can result in a more verbal battle. The antagonists of this series are known as Shadows, a deadly group of entities that seek to replace the living by copying their existence down to their personality and deleting the original. After one of them is the cause of Shinpei's family member's death, it leads to him tracking their existence down and finding out what really happened on that fateful day. The goal of the Shadows is to feed the one who gives them purpose known as Haine or the Mother of the Shadows. Shadows feed off of data and what else could be the best source of it than a fresh target ready to be copied and then deleted from existence. On top of this, the way combat works in the show is heavily reliant on a person's shadow itself. The physical body of a shadow is of means to blend in and operate, but in order to kill, one must physically attack the shadow they create naturally. The mystery of the show doesn't just stick to the existence of the shadows either, but also extends itself to individuals who may choose to work with them and the history of the relations with them. With the conflict in motion and characters like Hizuru, who is the most interesting showcase of a two-in-one package yet, being on the side of the victim them just like Shinpei, the story does a pretty good job of giving you enough answers and adding on to more questions each week. The plot recently has definitely let go of the situation being so shrouded in mystery and well rightfully so. We know what the situation is, who we can count on, and who must go down, and all that's left being this far in the story is the mere execution of it. Of course, it's not like there are no mysteries left as we still have Haine and her origin story still needing to come to light but also her personal bodyguard Shide. Shide is one of the most menacing and equally brutal antagonists of the show. Nine times I of 10, if Shinpei is going to be killed, it's going to be by him, and it really puts the two in the spot where it's a battle of who can outplay each other in every new loop. With the show entering its second half, there was also an increase in the stakes and the deadly personal confrontation. With ReZero, every time Subaru loops, it's not like somebody is directly looping with him, nor can he speak on his return by death to anyone, otherwise his heart's getting a nice bear hug. However, with Summertime Rendering, we do in fact have the direct opposite of the situation. There comes a point where as the truth becomes more and more apparent, the antagonist begins to understand their own standing in the situation and are soon able to loop with Shinpei after marking him, thus completely changing how both sides approach each other for the rest of the show. On top of this, there is also the limit of return by death being the more you loop, the less time there will be for Shinpei to loop back to. Knowing all of these variables makes every life crucial for the victory of our main cast and it's exactly what I think the second half of the show could have used. Recently, the episodes have been action packed with people like Yasushi Nishiya absolutely flexing their animation skills and even Arafumi Imai who has a a great track record with things like Ranking of Kings and Attack on Titan. This show without a doubt has been an absolute treat to watch weekly. Like I've said many times, it doesn't do anything critically game changing, especially with the return by death trope, but it doesn't need to. The story sets out to tell a supernatural murder mystery and when the stakes have grown almost every episode, it has succeeded so far in doing so. From execution to the action, this series is definitely one that held it down for me this summer. Of course with mystery series, there is always the worry of things fumbling or not coming to a solid conclusion, but I I feel that given just how unforgiving this story is in terms of who can die anytime, those who may live and those who will die, things should play out as intended. I don't think I'll have any complaints, but if I do, they will almost be minimum to none. Of course, my expectations are tempered, but as it stands, summertime rendering for the moment is an absolute banger seasonal. If by chance you have not started this yet, do yourself a favor and check this out because this is definitely one of the series that is defining spring and summer of anime 2022. That's pretty much it for me though. Thought I'd share how much I'm enjoying this series today and 
if you are also watching summertime rendering let me know how you are liking it in the comment section down below as always thank you for watching stay cool out there and i will catch you guys in the next video